Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, our guest is Lucien Vatel. Lucien is a trailblazer, transformational architect, and a soul agent. He's a for, he is at the forefront of conscious-based technologies and breakthrough human experience. Wow. Um, his journey has been the study of human consciousness, novel paths toward human awakening, the nature of the soul and service to the discovery of one's passion and purpose in their lifetime. Former tech CEO turned soul shepherd, Lucien spent most of his days supporting others find the core of who they really are and bringing that fully online to the world. His company is the Become Agency, a transformational branding agency that interweaves alchemical inner transformation with business realization and branding, which brings together the high art of branding with the esoteric arts to transform the inner and outer expression of human power and true prosperity. Lucian's vision for the world is a world where everyone is fully sovereign and unified. His I am, we are paradigm paints a world where all beings are fully empowered to realize their true dreams, making money, doing what they love and are fully connected to the all of humanity and the planet as one part of a whole. Wow. So kind of left brain, right brain going on here. Um, really interesting. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. So um, tell me more about um, your love of studying the nature of the human soul and the human experience and how that kind of plays into your experience in the tech world. Hmm. Well, I've always been interested in the nature of learning. Um, and in my early part of my career, I focused a lot on kids and um, figuring out ways to make learning more playful, more intuitive, um, and really looking at like what blocks the mind um, from understanding certain things. And um, I spent about 10 years building middle schools and high schools and technology and infrastructure and curriculum and teacher training and all of it um, to you know, move towards that idea. But what I started realizing was that um, what the, no matter where I went and no matter where we applied this work, no matter how hard we work to make the learning better, um, I kept coming into face, I kept coming face to face with the reality of what they were learning was a big issue. And what I saw, what they weren't learning is they weren't learning about who they were. Um, most of their, most people's developing years, very little is spent to the understanding of the nature of who you are and um, the, the Everybody's introspective- whole life is based yeah. upon finding out who we really are. Yeah, and, and most people don't start thinking about that until you know, their 30s, um, and um, I, especially in Western society. So I've always been <clears throat> really curious about that. And then at some point in my life, um, I kind of, I had an existential crisis. Um, I had realized that a lot of the things that I uh, was doing in my life, no matter how successful I was. Um, even when I, I remember after I did my um, TED talk, I was like, oh, well, I've arrived, you know, like now I've, 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 I've done it. Um, and so like, no matter how much money I would raise or products that I would build or impact that I believe I was making, like there was still this part of me inside that was trying to, um, that was trying to prove to that little boy inside of himself that he was a value. And, um, and that's when I realized that I was externally sourcing my, my internal value. And I realized that I didn't really know who I was. And from that, 
moment, I went on a really deep quest. I, I kind of walked away from that life and I spent, um, spent about six months drinking ayahuasca three days a week and just going super deep with myself. Um, and then I spent um, another four or five years just in deep seclusion and um, inter- just doing very deep internal work. And somewhere around the end of that period, um, I came to this realization that this is what people really need. People need, uh, people need support and understanding who they are. And, um, and that really began my quest. It's interesting because, you know, so many people, most people, you know, seek gratification from their external world. You know, the approval starts with the parents and then it moves on to, you know, peer groups in high school and then, you know, spouses or partners and then, you know, work, it goes on and on and on. And they get lost in that, you know, which I think is what you're saying. They get lost, you know, the external walls starts to be too much and define them instead of them defining who they really are. So how do you get them to that point of saying, this is who you are? You know, not everybody's going to do ayahuasca five days a week and, you know, become a hermit somewhere. You know, we kind of need to do this in our daily lives. Exactly. So, um, so when I, when I decided I wanted to explore that, I came up, I, but that was the thing I wanted to figure out. It's like, what, what is it a technology? Is it a process? Um, is it a way of being? Is it a curriculum? And so I, I explored all those arenas and um i um spent uh about two years developing a large-scale platform that would basically automate the process of helping a person discover their gifts and discover their truth and discover the parts of them that were hidden to them and um somewhere along designing this whole technology um i was like you know i need to really apply this directly i need to get into like the trenches of this and i remember it the day it really started i think the day that become really started was um i was in a i was in a um uber and the uber driver was driving erratically and very very edgy experience very extreme experience and um like new york every day (laughs) got to the point where um, I had to have him pull over and um, and he was having a nervous breakdown. Um, the stress of being in the Uber system was like putting him to his max, I think, in consciousness. And um, I had this moment of realization where it was like, this is an opportunity to actually take the things that I've been developing and apply it and see if this works. And I ended up spending about an hour with him, walking him through this this process. And um, it had a very powerful transformative effect. And after that, I started spending a lot of time working on the deep process itself. Um, and as, essentially what it is, is it's a series of, it's a, it's a mapping process that I take people through that allows them to map their consciousness, map, map their desires, map their superpowers or what they perceive their superpowers are also map the shadow and the parts of them that are hidden. And that's a particular process that, I, that I've continued to um, figure out and evolve um, and take best practices from other processes. But, um, um, and it's also an archetypal system, the, the ability to see ourselves um, as these archetypes that exist. Um, Young was really, Uh, instrumental to bringing that to the forefront and so I've I've taken it and turned it into a bit of a game and playful way to like explore these things and what it does is it it helps people build a map that they can actually see and interface with because a lot of times you you know we, we look in the mirror of our physical but we don't really look in the mirror of of our internal and so this gives a mirror to the internal and it also gives it a language and um and i find a lot of it is that um the the spell i call it the spell is in the spelling 
So like the spell, the, the, we spell ourselves all the time. Like we're, we're the creators of our own reality. And the, the ways that, that we talk to ourselves and the ways that we basically talk to ourselves um, and the language that we use and the ideas that we have um, and the belief structures and the meaning that we put behind those structures basically impacts the complete way that we perceive everything. And um, a lot of times I notice that a lot of people suffering um, is basically the way in which they're talking to themselves, the way in which they're interpreting the meaning of their own experiences. So uh, th there's a lot of focus on looking at that language and evolving that language to something that is actually aligned to the person. And um, so it's a lot of clarifying and getting clear. It's a lot of building the right language for actually who you want to be and how you want to act and attuning yourself to that um, through word and deed. And then um, being really aligned with it, what is your true vision of yourself? Like what, what is the thing that's gonna make you really happy and then the next question is how do you make money around it and how can you how it, it may be something that you need to make you want to make money around it may not be something that you need to make money around so do you do but how one do you on get one? aligned to the do you do this one-on-one -on -one with people or is this through some kind of computer-based program mm -hmm. it's... so i do it one-on-one -on -one. I'm still designing the technology to to bring it to everybody, but um, I do it one one person at a time, and um, and I do it so do it through the magic of branding. So um, that's the thing that I really really love because I also love to photograph people, um, and I love to create um things online that allow people to like really tune in to someone's magic and their power so yeah i've just taken the the art form of branding and the esoteric deep study of the human you know the human the nature of the human soul and brought it together so so i do this one-on-one -on -one. uh most people i do uh, work with, I we end up building a whole business around what they discover they really want to do and who they really are, and um, I help them become profitable, being that, discovering that, and being that. And then other people, I just help spiritually, energetically, and vibrationally attune to uh, attune to their true essence. And uh, and every person is different, and every person is a complete different journey. And every person is a mirror to my own consciousness. Uh, I learned so much from this process that it just evolves and deepens. And uh, it's my great pleasure to experience that and continue to study the nature of who we are through through all, all these all these experiences with, with the clients that I have and with the people that I meet. Do you have a background in psychology? Because a lot of this sounds like therapy. You know, I mean, I mean, a lot of what I do sounds like therapy too but do you have a background in psychology i had a minor in psychology um i had a major in i uh, went to usc and a minor in psychology and a major in um, cinema so i've always been interested in the psychological aspect of consciousness i've always been interested in the way media and technology expresses it so i'm not surprised that this is you know what i'm doing at this stage of my life so here we have you know the mind the body the spirit okay um and so you know you're using you know Jungian archetypes um and you're also going into the soul okay and you're raising vibration of the soul how are you doing that or how are you helping people do that well the vibration comes from the a few a, a few different things so getting in a more alignment to the energetics that are actually truly aligned to you raises the energy just naturally because first of all most most people who aren't fully aligned to where where they want to be at internally or externally um, for themselves they're not they're not living and embodying that belief or that vision of themselves so every step that a person takes to embodying that, um, which is part of the work, um, 
brings them into a higher frequency. The other part of it is the shadow hunting and the, the clearing of shadow. Um, so whatever thought forms, like one client might be uh, a fundamental belief system that's getting in the way of like their prosperity. Um, I have one client that just absolutely believed that um, because of the way his, his father indoctrinated him into this belief uh, is that you have, you cannot make money without working very hard. If you're not working hard, there's something wrong. And this was just like such a deep, deep belief that no matter all the other pieces that we worked on, um, if that wasn't transmuted, that wasn't going to open up the flow for him because he was going to be building evidence continuously on why that was going to need to be the case for his life. So like that shadow and, 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 and to some level, he wasn't even fully aware that this was happening, that this was actually driving him. Um, and so that's like, that's an example. Another one, yeah, a lot with clients that I work with because they, they, I tend to get also a lot of like online coaches or online personalities or people who want to be, become more online, you know, their, their ability to not believe in their own voice um, to, to not believe in their own, um, ability to, again, self-source, self-source that they actually have the ability to be fully expressed. Um, and so that's like a voice, voice chakra thing. And there's some, for different people, it's different things. That's basically holding back the voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, it's all held in shadow. So the shadow hunting, which is also part of the map building reveals all of those what I call programs, like, you know, they're, they're just basically statements. If I do this, then this is what's going to happen. Or like, this is fundamentally what I believe. And for almost all of my clients, there's a, usually a few critical ones that they've never voiced to themselves, like fully cognated, mm -hmm. you know, fully cognated, fully cognating your shadow, just that step allows some part that's hidden in you that's keeping you in that lower vibration to be hidden from you and not, and it also keeps it from you being able to actually work with it on any level that actually transmute, transmutes it. You have to actually be aware of it and see it in order to work with it. So that's an essential piece of the process, you well, know, how awareness. Long, how long does it take you to get to that piece? Because that's pretty painful for a lot of people, you know, to get to that fundamental belief system, the core belief system and say, yeah, this is why I've been living my life this way. And how do I transmute it? You know, the shadow side is not always pretty. You know, we all have it, but it's not always pretty. And you're, you're essentially helping them through behavior modification to say, you know, um, not only on a cognitive level, but their actions in life. So how long would it take for you to get to that place with these people where they can actually voice it? Completely depends on the person. I, I, I also have a screening process that, that I, I really only select clients that are willing to do the work. Um, I, I made the mistake of accepting people. I, I'm not a long-term therapist. Um, so I'm, I'm all about getting to it. And I really select people who, who are making a very conscious choice that that's part of what's going to happen and that they're really ready to face that immediately. And I, by the second week of work, uh, which is called the essence work, the shadow start, the shadow work starts. And by the fourth week, um, we're bringing all of that stuff to the surface. And then usually over, a, I would say over a three month period, um, a lot of the big ones pop and, and get, move into, uh, move into the higher frequency because um, they're aware of it. I'm aware of it. They have a co-pilot, which is me to help continue to make sure that that is getting addressed. Um, and I, I, I particularly focus on shadow work that is keeping them from doing the things that they want to do. I'm not like a lifetime therapist for, for example, like deep, deep emotional or sexual or, um, or, or major traumas that require much lengthier work and deeper work. I'm, I'm really focusing on the critical blocks 
that are that are keeping them from doing the thing that they realize they want to be doing in their lives. That's like the fundamental um, focus that I that I that I have. And then I have other, I have a team of other people that um, are associated to the agency. That if I see that there's something that I actually can't bring, or it is something deeper, I then refer them to uh, a cohort of people that are, I believe, more specialized in the types of things that would be beneficial to that person. Um, so what that's if, also part of the process. What if some of the shadow is from past lives? Have you come across that where you have to clear that from a past life? So, I mean, when I, when I perceive that there's something that is rooted Sometimes I have a real deep intuition that it's not from the lifetime. Um, and then usually when we discuss some of the major shadow aspects, we'll go through the process of like linking it back. And if it doesn't feel like there's anything from childhood where it's coming from, then I we usually get to the conversation of like feeling in whether this is something that they, they came in with. And do they feel that? And is that does that feel true for them? Does it does it does it not connect to any memory that they can feel? And then in that case, um, it, it's it's from a past life. But I don't do I don't do energetic clearing work. I focus on I don't really focus on where it comes from in terms of like the 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 transmutation of the shadow. I focus on just identifying what it is, and then getting to a place of releasing it and transmuting it from, from just knowing what it is. And um, that's just my particular way of doing it. And it, 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 it works for what it needs to accomplish, so. You know, when you spoke yeah. about alchemy, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is the violet flame. Um, do you do any kind of spiritual alchemy around the ascended masters or anything like that? I work with the, I call in their higher self and I call in their, um, the parts of the, there's a chakra activation that happens when they move into the essence work and there's a alignment to the higher, to their higher self. And I call in any guides um, and angelics that are available to serve them for the, the purpose of the extraction. Um, but I don't work with specific teachers or masters um, in, uh, in the etheric. Um, I, I haven't indoctrinated that practice. I've, I've, I've been curious about it, but I tend to focus on the per, I tend to focus on the person and the soul. That's also why I don't go to like astrology or other systems, because um, it's really important in, in the process I offer to have the person feel completely empowered to on their own without any perceived assistance other than me just guiding them through their own process of generating this map of their own consciousness um, there's something about a person doing that for themselves that generates, um, a, a degree of empowerment that I feel is really important for the process. And the times where I've looked, worked with external systems, even though it's really good information and it's solid information for who they are, it doesn't particularly help me in my particular work with them. It, it, it actually just, I find it distracting. And also on some level, because um, there are, there are certain, hmm, the, there are certain people who it, it's, it's more his, in their nature to also externalize their direction. So they'll tend to reach out to psychics for advice, or they'll reach out to an astrologer for like, you know, a help for a path. And I do believe all those things are very helpful. However, my particular <laughs> magic is getting them to focus on themselves as their own guide. 
I don't disagree with you. First of all, I don't even think, I don't think I'm a medium and I do not predict the future. And I think, and but I'm also a hypnotherapist, okay? And yeah. that mm-hmm. power of suggestion leads people to what you're saying. So instead of saying, you know, if you say to somebody, oh, um, you know, this is what you're going to be doing in 10 years, they kind of make it their purpose to do it, which may not be what, they really need to do on their path, you know? So I don't like power of suggestion. You know, I don't, I mean, I might tell them something that it's in motion, like it's in motion that they're changing jobs, but right. you know, aside from that, otherwise it's a power of suggestion, you know? So mm-hmm. that kind of, kind of bothers me, you know, with predicting the future, you know, so, I mean, astrology doesn't always do that, you know, um, depending on who you go to as an astrologer. Um, but, you know, I think that when it comes to long-term predicting, yeah, you, you don't want to give people the power of suggestion. You spoke before about um, also, you know, branding. So is it branding just to attract money or branding to figure out who you are? Like here I am, I'm a walking brand of Anna Raimondi. I know who I am. You know, I'm following my path. You know, is that what you're doing or branding in terms of, you know, here's the business you need to do, speak out and do it and, you know, attract money? I love this question. This is such a good question. Um, I believe that the branding process is, is pure magic. And um, branding for me is basically spell, like from a, you know, I, I consider myself like, a, I study the magical arts. And um, for me, the art of branding is the deep elucidation of a spell that is cast, that is cast in, in, in terms of personal branding, cast around you. And, um, and what branding is really amazing is that it's like, it gives you this canvas. Again, like it's like the charting process. This is why I love this process of like charting and branding because it's like a, it's like a canvas and you start putting things on this canvas like you would a vision board. You know, it's like a vision boarding of yourself. But for the purpose of emitting a signal, a melody, as it were, like a song. I, I, sometimes I often ask people, what, what, you know, what is your song? Because um, the more that you understand the notes of your song and how you want it to sound and the way that you want people to feel, the, ma- the more you understand about the nature of your own song. And, you know, I guess one way you could look at it is, yeah, so maybe a branding agency is like a Trojan horse to like, maybe I'm using a branding agency as a tra- Trojan horse to do deep work with people. And it's to some degree that's true. However, um, um the process of creating the language on the site creating the language for the marketing online creating the photography so for example all of the archetypes and descriptions and magical words that we create when we create the chart the become chart are all used to infuse the way i photograph them those we literally photograph those archetypes so that what is seen, what is read, and what is felt is, is um, uh, an elegant symphony, as it were, that impacts the consciousness that allows you to create the right attractor field that is the most aligned to who you really are, that then brings in the right energy. And then if you can align the prosperity piece to like actually how that energy comes in to actually feed you, then you end up building what I call like a, a really balanced toroidal field. So that the melody that goes out is purified and clear and powerful and, and you know, dialed, as it were. And, and, and it goes out in a very clean way. It knows what it's speaking to. It knows its song. It knows how it's, it, it's meant to impact consciousness. And then the way that's designed, if it's designed for prosperity, is, is designed to bring back that energy in the form of currency. Uh, to that person in a way that fulfills them and, and allows that toroidal. Uh, so that, see, I don't, I think it's all holistic and integrated. Um, I don't see business branding or becoming uh, separate. They're all part of a whole. And so that's, uh, 
that's also part of the study is like how do all of those things come together in a really powerful way. That's really interesting because, you know, my background is in clinical psychology, but I also have an MBA. Um, and like this kind of thing, like, is what was missing in business school. You yeah. know, um, it's, it, do you speak to businesses? Do you go into companies and speak to them about this sort of thing? One day I may, I, I feel like I'm still in the, um, I'm, 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 I'm in my, um, this is still my maiden voyage. So I'm a little over a year and a half into this process of like doing this for a good amount of clients. And um, I feel that maybe in a, another six months or to a year, I feel like I, I would be okay with sharing that in a way that would be really effective to transmit and be supportive. Uh, but I still working out a few kinks mm. and um, the journey and, it's still, it's still part, it's part of the journey. And, um, and, you know, to be honest, I have just now my biz, it's like, for me, I did the same process on myself when I decided to, to do become my main three. I have this thing called the brand Trinity, uh, which is, um, people, uh, there's two brand Trinities actually. One is, um, a brand is essentially composed of your essence your um, paradigm uh, and your medicine. Uh, and so the paradigm is your message or like the thing that you hold that's larger than yourself that is attractive to people. The medicine is the, what you are actually offering that is providing uh, service or benefit to them in some way. And the essence is like who you are and how you hold whatever that is in you and people are attracted to you because of that. And um, and, but also within that Trinity are like the main parts of you that are kind of integrate that make you that thing. And so, for example, with me, you know, I had a variety, I was a tech CEO for many years as a professor at a university for, for many years. I love teaching. Um, and then I, um, I, I went deep with magic and esoteric work and human transformation. And, um, and I, the other thing was that I I went through a period where I made movies and was really into photography and an artist and I got a degree in cinema and I, I loved the art cinematic art form and cinematography and so for me my trinity was like well these are the things I really love and I think I feel like I'm really good at and you know personal transformation the art and visual the visual arts uh, and um, business so <laughs> creating the become agency like when I first was like oh well can I bring all this together in some way that like fulfills me and integrates these, these things that I've gotten to this point in my life that like, I feel like I would feel very fulfilled by bringing all these things. I get to be an artist. I get to be a business person and I get to be um, focusing on this study, the, the nature of the soul and transformation. And so when I brought that together for myself um, and this is what I see what happens with my clients, it's the same phenomenon. Once you actually get it all aligned, it it opens up so much chi, like life force energy, because like you're 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 all parts of you are coming online around this thing that just feels so aligned for you. That usually it's a quantum leap in the field. Um, for me, the become like immediately of all the enterprises I've ever done, it took off. Like it, the minute I announced it. The minute I put it out there, um, it just generated energy, so much energy. And um, I've had to do very little advertising. Um, it just, the, the energy is so strong. I mean, I'm so aligned to it mm -hmm. that it allows a much for much more effortless um, process. Uh, and because I feel so good doing it all the time, I just, I'm so available for it. Um, and this is what I see with my clients too, is that once they get to that alignment and they pop into it, um, sometimes I have this thing where I, I prove to, it's really important to prove to them that they don't need to have like the perfect website up, the perfect this, the perfect, they have everything. Well, I can't really do this thing that I've always wanted to do with my life until I get all these ducks in a row. Um, 
I show them once they get aligned, how powerful that is. And I often encourage them to be like, look, just start saying this is what you do. That's and exactly what like, it's amazing just, how that works. It's a, it just I amazing. Guess, you know, when I, especially started, if you're aligned, you know, right, if you're if really you're aligned, aligned to it. And the universe brings it to you. When I, exactly. first, when I first decided to go public, I thought, what's going to happen? And someone said to me, they will come. And I was like, okay, this is not field of dreams, but okay. And they came in droves, you know, because I just right. put it out there. Can I ask you a question? Who's Victor? Victor, that was my, uh, that was my, uh, I changed my name uh, 12 years ago. Okay. Because I keep Le legally Victor, Victor, Victor. Um, there's, because I'm hearing there's still an element of Victor. Like, you know, like you could change your name, but you can't, and you could look into your shadow side, but I'm hearing very clearly, you can't change the boy inside of you. You know, <laughs> and I keep hearing Victor, Victor, Victor. Um, do you have a lot of French blood? Yes, I do. Yeah, because there's people all around you speaking French, um, all speaking French, and they want you to help the little boy um, who's highly intuitive and very deep and a very old soul whose name begins with a J. Do you know who that is? A young boy, his name begins with a J. Do you have a family member whose name begins mm -hmm. with a J, a young boy? I'll, I'll go deep with this one and fill into, fill into that. Um, I think, oh yeah, okay, my nephew, Jaden. Okay, he's a deep kid, okay, deep. He's, he can be very intense, okay? And he needs some help around that, okay? In hitting his, his stride. And so you have a grandfather here asking you to help. Is your father named for his father or his grandfather? I was adopted, I don't know my lineage. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, but you're still in your energetic family as well. Okay, you're still okay. in the adopted family as well. So I feel like it goes both ways. So you have your energetic and you have your adopted family. Okay, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and you need to, um, there's, th th you because I'm feeling like don't divorce. Don't divorce either family. Like both families play a part in you and that's important. You've come a long way from where you began, biologically and energetically, you know, from your both families, you've come a long way. Um, but, you know, I feel like, I feel like you've been loved, you know, I mean, you know, mistakes are made, things happen, um, but accept the love that's coming through. Um, that would be a really good thing for you. Beautiful. Thank you. You're very I receive welcome. that. You're very welcome. <laughs> that's so wonderful. Much. Thank you so much for coming on today. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, I hope all of you out there enjoyed today's episode. If so, please like, share, and comment, and be sure to just subscribe to our channel so you never, ever miss an episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a pleasure.